Hello, good afternoon. Um, today, I am going to have the synchronous class for our subject readings in Philippine history. Uh, I'm going to uh, give my inputs on the previous discussions that we had. Of course, this topic is already been this was already been discussed by the first group, the voyage of Ferdinand Magellan and Sebastian Elcano. So this time also, I'm I'm going to have my recapitulation of the previous topic, no? Because there are some items there that we need to elaborate, no? So by the way, no, you already take the took the examination, no? This discussion was also related to the previous discussion that we had about the Magellan's expedition around the world. So this afternoon, I am going to elaborate the discussion about site of the first mass in the Philippines. So another thing is, uh, after I will have my discussion, no, I will be also giving you the task. No, I think it's already posted in the LMS in your portal. Uh, by the way, I'm also going to update the portal, no, the lessons in the LMS. So after my discussion this time, uh, you will be going to answer the topics, uh, the assessment on this topic, the site of the first mass. Uh, in the later later part, I will be also uh, discussing to you the the um, the assessment, no, how to answer. And what is all our uh, what is the assessment all about? Okay, so this time now I'm going to share my screen. So uh, we have the site of the first months. No, the uh, this is a continuation of the discussion you know, of the voyage for the Magellan because this was also part of the competencies or the topic about the expedition during the fourth, uh, 14th to 15th century. So now there are some issues, conflicting information about the first uh, the first mast you know, in the Philippines. So where, it, where was the location of the site of the first mast in the Philippines? So there are some authors, historians, claim that the first mast was in Limazawa in Leyte, and there is also another uh, another site, which is the Mazawa, no? which is located in Butuan City. So this Mazawa is, today is called Masao. So there are two conflicting na mga, uh, data or information about the first site of uh, the site of the first mass in the Philippines. But however, uh this issue has been yeah the, this issue had been uh already resolved because the national historical commission of the philippines already gave their verdict that it was in lima limasawa the site of the first mass in the philippines but of course if you are claiming that uh, it is in masawa in butuan no there are still uh there are still processes that they have undergo in order for them to, to uh, what they call this one, to revise, no, or to to convince the National Historical Commission of the Philippines about the site of the first mass here in the Philippines. So, prior, before we go to the site of the first mass in the Philippines, let's go back again. Uh, its foundation. Uh, how did these individuals, like the group of Ferdinand Magellan, able to reach our country? Although our country was not named Philippines before, you know, there were some natives. If you try to look at the first slide, there is a picture there. There is a Eucharistic celebration. There is a priest who presided the Eucharistic celebration. And these three individuals in front, of course, these are Spanish colonials, you know, a colon, uh, Spanish colonial officer. I think it's in the center. We have Ferdinand Magellan. And of course, at the back, these are the Filipino natives during that time. So we are going to trace back again uh, about these uh, issues, no, uh, so that we can really have our claim, no, because part of the activity will be all about your claim. You're going to choose 
uh, between Lin Masawa and Masawa. So you're going to conduct different uh, researches, reading of different articles, because our subject is readings in Philippine history. Therefore, uh, I think this is one of the activities that you will have that it will require you, it will require you to, to read more articles, news articles, online uh, online resources, no? internet resources. No? Uh, we have also the primary and the secondary sources. So to proceed, no? to go back, no? uh, I know that uh, it was been discussed already by your classmates who is assigned to this topic about the expedition, the age of exploration, expedition, and navigation. So this time, if you try to look at the second slide, there are two opposing corner. No, there were two opposing, uh, two opposing side. There are two gloves there, color blue and red. It symbolizes the the two countries, no, uh, the flag of Portugal and the flag of Spain. We all know already that these are two Catholic countries. No, they already know that during this time the most powerful individual or person was the pope so because these two countries are all catholic countries they have the same vision mission of course there they have the same ideas on about the three g's the god golds the god gold and glory so these are the three main reasons of their exploration now they were all already have the idea that they need to do that because of these three following reasons Although they are both Catholic countries, no, they become rivals. No, you say rivals katunggalit, no, because there is a competition between them that who will have the most powerful control of the different territories around the world. Because these two countries were the two countries able to start to send an exploration. No, uh, these two countries are also called the Iber part of the Iberian Peninsula. No. I think there are some discussions here. We've already been part of the examination. So to continue, if you try to look at this one, uh, I think it's already part of the examination. Uh, the Treaty of Tordesillas, no? when you say a treaty, it is an agreement. No? Agreement between two countries. In this case, there are two countries involved. So we have Spain and Portugal. We all know that, <clears throat> excuse me, that Portugal, between the two, was the first to send an exploration. So they have the idea ng kaninga part, no, this is the existing world. No, they don't have the idea that there are other continents no, in the western part of the world, the western hemisphere. So this is Portugal and Spain. So their main reason, why one of the main reasons was to locate or to find the Spice Island. So this is the Spice Island. So now this area or this part of the world was already controlled by the Portuguese. And on the western part, it was controlled by the Spanish colony. So now the Pope decided you know, in order to resolve the issue between the two countries, they are both Catholic, they, he decided to divide the world. You know? So they decided to divide, uh, to divide the world. That treaty is called the Treaty of Tordesillas. It is a line from the north part, northern part of the world, or the North Pole down to the South Pole. Now, this line is what we call the demarcation line. This is just an imaginary line that will signify your territory. Now, of course, these two countries were the two countries uh, able to send an exploration first in the Western world, no? in, the, in the European countries. No? So, Maonesia. Ang tanan na nasa east, we all know that all part of the east was part of the of the Portugal colony, and the west we have the Spanish colony. Okay, okay, for a moment. Okay, to, to continue, we have this map. No, we are going to observe the map that, uh, as I said a while ago, it's on the part of the east side, it is owned by Portugal, and the west side is Spanish. So, according to the Portuguese, now they don't have any idea that there are some other part of the world in the western part, the part of Kalibutan. 
So, lands in the west belongs to Spain, while lands on the east owned by Portugal. So, this line from the Atlantic region going to this part is Portugal. So, west pa doon dere. But there is one country that was been colonized, no? Kahit gikan man dere, ah, kanang na part dere. This is Brazil. So, Brazil was still part of the territory of Portugal during this time. No? The only colony of Portugal in America, this is North America, this is South America. No? Brazil was part of, uh, part of South America. So this is the largest country in South America. And this is also called the Latin America. No? So Latin America, they're speaking a Latin or Spanish, no? And then, because this is the only uh, colony of Portugal, of course the Portugal are speaking Portuguese. Until such to, uh, until today, Brazil was known to be a Portuguese speaking country because of the influence of the Portuguese people there when they were colonized on that time. So, west side. Spain. So prior to Ferdinand Magellan, no? prior to Ferdinand Magellan, there was um, there was an explorer sponsored also by by Spain in the person of Christopher Columbus. No? Who is Christopher Columbus? So Christopher Columbus was a, a, a navigator no? during this time. A navigator uh, that was being sponsored by Spain, no? So Christopher Columbus was the founder, the, dis the one who discovered uh, discover America. So that is why if you try to look at, uh, try to observe the capital city of, of America is Washington, D.C. So Washington DC, the word, uh, the letter DC uh, symbolizes District of Columbia. It was named after Christopher Columbus. So, according to his exploration, according to the exploration experience of Christopher Columbus, he was also given, like Ferdinand Magellan, when he was being sponsored by the Spanish government during that time, Spanish royalty, he was sponsored uh, of the expedition and he was also given. Three ships. So the ships of, of Christopher Columbus was Ninia, Pinca, and of course, it another one is Santa Maria. So these are the three. You know? When Christopher Columbus reached, you know, going back to the presentation, reached the America, this is America, you know, the North and South. In general, this is all America, the North and South. When he reads in this part, according to him, it is another world. It's another world. Why? If you try to look at the map, no, it, I think it is a, a separate part of land. No? Because their focus before in this uh, that time, according to this European, according to them, but actually, it's still part of the world. No? Even as of today, part of the world. So according to him, he discovered another world. So that is why he called that place New World. So New World Dao, New World. Or in Latin, it is called Novos Mundos. No? The, the one who discovered uh, the New World is uh, was Christopher Columbus. No? New World, Novos Mundos. If you try to look at most of the countries in South America and in Latin America are Spanish-speaking countries because the Spanish control this uh, territory is here. No, Malang, Mexico, Cuba, uh, Chile, Argentina. There are all Spanish-speaking countries. Now they have the same, uh, most, uh, the same, almost the same culture with the Filipinos because Philippines was colonized by Spain for three hundred, more than three hundred years. So pareha ginta no o culture sa ilaha because we were influenced by the Spanish uh, na culture. So now, after Anna, here comes Ferdinand Magellan. No, he was born in Portugal. Therefore, he was a, 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 he is a Portuguese. No, he was died in April 27, 1521 because of the Battle of Mactan. No, it, he was killed by the group of 
Raha Lapu-Lapu. Now, he was one of the most famous explorer and navigator in the world. That is why uh, he became a most famous to the world history no? and geography. Uh, he was also been labeled as the first to circumnavigate the earth or the world. Although he was not able to return to Spain because he was being killed in the Battle of Mactan. But the group of the, the, the other crew members of the ships headed by the different captain, especially Sebastian, uh, Juan Sebastian del Cano, able to reach back to uh, Spain through the Victoria, no? that, that, that the name of that ship. So, that, that name of that ship. Okay, in 1517, no, it is just a recall no, of the previous discussion, but I want to give my, my inputs during this time. That King Manuel I was the king during that time, when he presented, no, this was the time that he was not able yet to go to, to Spain. So in 1517, he presented his plan to the king of Portugal, King Manuel I. Uh, he was being refused to allow to organize an expedition to Spice Island. No? Because uh, according to him, he could reach this Spice Island by not going to the east, no? This is a big question. No? How can you get into the east if you are not going to use the east road? Because in his plan, because he wants to prove the, the, that the world is round and he wants to prove that he could circumnavigate the world by that road. So, of course, if I am the king, I will really refuse or reject your plan. No? But, wala na wad anong pag-asa si Ferdinand Magellan. Now, after he was being refused from that plan by the king of Portugal, he renounces his nationality as a Portuguese, meaning tinanggal niya or uh, ang ibig sabihin nito ay uh, yung kanyang nationality na pagiging Portuguese ay inalis niya sa kanyang sarili. No? Kaya in 1519, he was being welcomed by the rival country of Portugal during this time. Of course, it was Spain. So the king of Spain during that time was King Charles. When Ferdinand Magellan offered his plan to the royalty of Spain, no, of course, they, they all know that Ferdinand Magellan um, was coming from Portugal, of course, uh, that was a uh, uh, rival of Spain. Therefore, the king of Spain, Charles I, uh, received and accept the plan of Ferdinand Magellan. That is why he was given the five ships already. Uh, their main reason, their, their, the main destination of the expedition is the Spice Island. We all know how valuable the Spice Island was during that time. No? So he started no, in 1519, September 20, the Magellan's expedition. Okay, so the reason of the expedition is to look for an alternate route no, during the age of discovery and of course to annex territory. Now, because this is the competition before, no? the, the more territory that you will be able to extend or to colonize, you will become more powerful. But during this time, because he was being sponsored by the Spanish government or royalty, of course, all territory that he will be able to discover will be given to the royalty of Spain. Okay, to continue, I know the Campanicia, we have... The expedition is called Armada de Moloca, the arm of Moloca. Moloca is the strait where the Spice Island, Moloca or Malaca, the Moloca or the Molocas Island or the Malaca, it was found is found in Indonesia near Malaysia. Of course, it is also near in the Philippines. So the name of the fleet is Armada de Moloca. It was consists of it consisted of five ships and 237 men in total. But that, that you know, if you try to look at, to visit the LMS, the, there were videos there being posted about the, the timeline of the expedition of the group of Ferdinand Magellan. No? You can go back, you, know, you can review that video so that you will be familiar with the sequence of events or the timeline. So there are five ships and it was... It was manned or manned or there were captains or leader of the different ships. Okay, start with Santiago, 
the one who manned Santiago was Juan Rodriguez Serrano. And in San Antonio, we have Juan de Cartagena. And in Concepcion, we have Gaspar de Quesada. And in Victoria, which was the, the only ships able to return to Spain, we have Luis de Mendoza. And of course, Berde Magellan was uh, the captain of Trinidad, the flagship. And you say flagship among the five, Mone Maguna. No? Okay, to continue. We have these two individuals, very important individual. We have Juan Sebastian Elcano and Antonio Pigafetta. No? So Antonio Pigafetta was the autobiographer of Ferdinand Magellan in his journey, in his expedition. Juan Sebastian de Elcano was also the assistant of Ferdinand Magellan. Okay? Okay, here is the timeline. Okay, of course, March 22, 1519, King Charles IV support the voyage of Ferdinand Magellan to search the Spice Island. So their main destination is the Spice Island. But sad to say, Ferdinand Magellan were not able to reach the Spice Island because he was killed in the Battle of Mactan. So he started in September 20. On September 26, he crossed and stopped over at the Canary Island. You can also check this one in the video being posted in the LMS. Uh, December 13, he reached Rio de Janeiro. No, as to continue on the Shetanen. Of course, uh, he also reached March 31, he reached Puerto San Julian and October 21, start the sailing to All Saints Strait, no? Or also called that time is the Strait of Ferdinand, uh, the State of Magellan. And on November 28, passed by the Marianas Island. And on March 6, 1521, their fleet finally anchored in Guam. So Guam is very near in the Philippines. And that time when they, they anchored their, the fleet in Guam, now some of their resources was being looted by the natives there. There, looted meaning ikawata, no? So 10 days after, no, continue sila sa ilahang expedition, they were able to reach the Philippines, but the Philippines that time was no name. There was no Philippines during that time. There was no name. Uh, the, the Philippines has no name during that time. No, it was March 16, 1521. But actually, it's not March 16. It's must, it must be March 17. No, uh, Because they don't have yet the idea before that the world has different time zone. Now, when you are in the East, your date is advanced for one day. When you are in the West, uh, late of one day. No? Because they uh, cross the, what we call the international date line. So also later must be one plus one day. Uh, one, one day. But uh, the records in the history tell us that it's on March 16, 15, 21. So the first place is the island of Samal or Zamar. Okay, so... When they reach Philippines, so now let's have their timelines and expedition in our country, Philippines. So on March 17, they landed on the island. The first island that, sighted, uh, that was sighted by the group of Ferdinand Magellan was the island of Homonhon. This Homonhon now is in Samar. No? Uh, called it Agua de Libuene or Signale, watering place of good signs. Because of the two springs with clearest water and first signs of gold, they found it in the district. So after that, in March 18, 1521, a boat wine with nine men, they are all natives from Zuluan, meet Magellan and the group. The natives were reasonable and offered Spaniards food and to eat and a lot of things. So they were being accommodated by the natives that time. No? So Ferdinand Magellan, and his group able to have a trade, no exchange of product, no of their merchandise, okay, like this uh, spices like cloves, cinnamon, pepper, ginger, and many more. So when Ferdinand Magellan reached that place, that two, uh, this place are summer and late. These are the only Philippines before, no. This was named. These islands uh, were named. Island of Saint Lazaro. No, because no, during the time when they reached this island, 
it is the feast it was the feast day of saint lazaro aside from that now the queen of spain during that time was a devotee of saint lazaro as a sign of giving of giving back the honor to the king and queen of spain that is why Ferdinand Magellan named this island Las Islas de San Lazaro or the Isla of the or the Archipelago of the Philippines. So what is an archipelago? An archipelago is a group of islands. A land a landform which is composed of groups or many islands like the Philippines. To continue on March 22, 1521, the natives came back with merchandise that the Spaniards bought. So, balik ang mga natives para mabailuan ang ilahang mga merchandise. So, what else? In March 23, that was Holy Friday during that time, Magellan, Magellan asked, sent his slave to ask for foods in small boats to at the shore. Magellan wanted to be brothers with the king so that time they already continued their their expedition and they reached the limasawa or the mazaw island so it will be depend uh, it will depend on you kung asan is yan, okay? because this is now the the first site of the the first mass the site of the first mass in the philippines on this time they are now traveling to that the, the site of the first mass in the philippines but I would like to remind you that this slide, in this slide, the, the author or the, the one who presented the presentation, they claim that it is in Butuan, no? based on the presentation. So another king came uh, who was described as hair exceedingly black and hung into his whole sh shoulders, had a covering self in his head and, and, wore, wore, and wore two large golden earrings. So this was... Uh, the king was Raha Shago and Raha Colombo of Butuan. It, because this is Butuan, you know, the, 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 the claim of the presentation is Butuan. So the site was Masawa. But on the activity, you know, it will be on your decision, on your perspective, that how are you going to decide or how are you going uh, in your claim if it is in Masawa or in, in Limasawa. To continue, so on March 31, that was Easter Sunday, Magellan sent a priest to prepare the place for the Mass. So this was the exact date of the Mass, the Easter Sunday. Now every March 31 in Masa in Butuan, if you have visited the Masa, the, the Barangay Masa there in Butuan, you, uh, of course, it is a beach, you know, uh, they, this become a beach resort. No? Many tourists, local tourists are going there. And of course, if you, you uh, if you were able to visit the place, there was a replica, uh, a replica of the cross Magellan's cross that was being placed there to commemorate the first mass in the Philippines. Of course, in Limasawa there was also a cross there symbolizes also uh, the first mass because that was also their claim. No, so the two kings were sprinkled with mass water. No, it was being presided. No, the mass, the Eucharistic mass, was presided by Father Pedro de Valderrama. So, if you try to look at the, the slides, it's on. It's in Limasawa. It's in Mazawa. No, pero na po Limasawa. So, kamo na mo decide kung asa. Depende sa inyo mga readings. The people were hidden, naked, and painted. Wore piece of cloth woven from a tree about their previous and heavy drinkers among others to describe them. So Magellan remained on Masawa Island or Limasawa Island for seven days. After that, they proceed to the following. You know, they passed the Ceylon in Leyte, Buhol, Kanighan, Baibai, Katighan, until such time they reached the city of Cebu or what we call uh, Subbu or Subbu, no? So on April 7, 1521, Ferdinand Magellan able to enter the port of Cebu or Zubu. Now, upon approaching the city, the banners were thrown forcefully, sails were lowered and arranged, and artillery was fired that caused fear to the people there, the natives there. But he was being accommodated by the king, one of the king of Cebu or Raha of Cebu, 
in the person of Raha Kumabon, who also became the first uh, Christian, you know, the first to be baptized as Christian in our country, is Raha Kumabon. Together with his, together with his wife, Juana. Juana was the name given after the, his wife his wife was baptized to, to Christianity. Raha Humabon, his Christian name is called Carlos. This was in honor to the king of Spain, King Charles. No, Carlos Charles. Of course, when they were able to be, when they were converted as Catholic or Christian, now there was a gift of Ferdinand Magellan to the wife of Raha Humabon or King Carlos. No? Juana, the wife, was able to receive a gift from Ferdinand Magellan. That the gift was the whole the image of the holy infant Jesus, or in our dialect or in our language, it is called ang imahe ni Señor Santo Niño. No, so that sign that symbolizes the identity of Cebu. No, the Señor Santo Niño. No? The the celebration, the festivity is called the Sinolog Festival, no? which is very famous in our country in honor to Senior Santo Nino. So in April 8, 1521, there are some other places in Cebu that was also managed by different Raja, uh, and that was uh, Raja Lapu-Lapu. Now, when Raja Humabon accept this foreign people, the group of foreign Magellan, Raja Lapu-Lapu was angry during that time. No, He did not accept for the Magellan. Now, when for the Magellan offers uh, Raha Lapu-Lapu to be converted as Christian, of course, they refuse this too because they are foreigner. But there are some other people there in Cebu already converted. They undergo the what we call the blood compact as a sign of most sincere friendship which Magellan agreed upon. No? So all of the people there in the city of Cebu during that time was being converted to Christianity. No? So April 2, 1521, the Spanish should should the uh, town people a lot of merchandise no nagbaligya na nag exchange na no so na baptizean ang halos na ng tao dana na time but there was no the king were baptized but some chief of the village refused but told will be killed if they will refuse to be baptized and that was uh lapu lapu because we all know that lapu lapu was one of the most bravest uh leader in that place so he accept the challenge, no? That uh, they need they need to prove to the foreign people during that time, the Spanish uh, people, na kaya nila ipaglaban ng ilang lugar. So they decided to have what we call the battle of uh, in Mactan. Okay, these are kaganiya ng isulte, no? Na mga na convert to Christianity. One day, no, na mani siya sa gitna. Na to na skip na lang na to eh. So, of course, the most famous event, no, if you have visited the Lapu-Lapu City in Cebu, no, there is a landmark there, the, uh, the Battle of Mactan. No? Uh, the group of Ferdinand Magellan was not able to be successful that time, and he was killed in the Battle of Mactan. That is why he failed to reach his official destination. The, the Spice Island. Okay. So this is the continuation. After their defeat, Spaniard, Spaniard went back to Cebu, but the people did not respect them anymore because they were able, they were defeated by the group of Raja Lapu-Lapu. So, they are not so good. No? Actually, Ferdinand Magellan did not discover, uh, did not colonize our country because he was killed. No? He was not successful in colonizing our country. No? That is why Lapu-Lapu was declared as the first Filipino hero in our country. So they continue. No? So Trinidad sailed to Mexico but caught by the Portuguese. The only ships that able to successfully arrive in Spain, September 6, with survivors captained by Sebastian de Elcano. So that is why the expedition is Magellan, Perna Magellan, Sebastian de Elcano expedition because Sebastian de Elcano was the captain of Victoria that really proved that the world is round because they were able to circumnavigate the world. Okay, to continue, 
results of Agile and Mulhage, the first circumnavigation of the Earth. So this is the impact, no? Additional knowledge of the field of geography. No? Number three, it made Spain most so much interested to our country to colonize, no? It was Miguel Lopez de Legazpe, another expedition, no? It was Miguel Lopez de Legazpe who declared our country as a colony of Spain after several years when Ferdinand Magellan was killed in the Battle of Mactan. So this time, we are going to answer this question by using the assessment given and posted in your LMS. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where was the site of the first mass in the Philippine soil? So this is the big questions that you're going to answer. But you will not just answer that one in a simple essay or a simple response, a two-sentence response. It will undergo a research base, no? a literature-based. I know a uh, literature-based literature base answer. I know that you have the idea about research. No? When you were in your senior high school, no, you have subject research. So we need to integrate research here. No? So going to your... LMS, now it's already active. You just click that one. You will be guided with this instruction. I hope uh, it will be clear to you. you no, know, anytime when it in this uh, session will be posted, uh, you can ask questions na lang through the group chat. You no, know? okay. So this time I'll be discussing to you the assessment task given. No, probably it is more like a performance task because. It requires it require more time for you to answer the task. Huh? So I posted here. Please read the different articles in the first mass in the Philippines. These are all our references, but you can add some of your own resources. These are online articles that will be helpful for you in answering or making your reaction paper. So you are going to submit a reaction paper, no? It must be encoded in MS Word or in the Word the document, Word document. So you are required to write a reaction paper. Here is the format of the reaction paper. But before going to the format, these are the criteria. So this is what we call the, the rubrics or the matrix or the guidelines in order for you to obtain good grades of your reaction or reflection paper. So to start... To obtain good grades, students are expected to provide the following. Number one, it must be a well-structured essay based on assigned relevant literature, text, and topic. So these are the literature given. It's an online sources. No? If you try to remember your research subject before, these are also considered as literature. No, So... You read a lot of literature, but you can add more than that. No, Our assigned relevant topic is all about the first mass in the Philippines. Number two, you will gather evidences. No, It must be an appreciation, evidence of an appreciation of the key issues. Of course, we all know that the key issues is the first was the first mass in the Philippines. And of course, you need to have a deep, in-depth thinking about those issues. Number three, development of students' own personal perspective. So therefore, you will give your own personal insights based on the research and literature that you read. No, this is an own explanation. No, your your perspective about the issue. The issue is all about the first mass. So how are you going to do that? Of course, you will cite situation which also be supported with readings. From the books, periodicals, but we don't have books and periodicals because you are not yet allowed to visit the library of the school. Of course, we are using the internet sources. So when you do your, your perspective, you are always going to cite your resource, uh, your, your, uh, the author. No? For example, according to the study of Bates, the, the first mass. No, Bates, 1998. No, I know that you have that experience. No, in writing your literature. No, for example, according to Bates, the, according to his study, 1998, the first mass was in Limasawa because 
there were some excavation of different artifacts found in that place. For example, Anasiha. So this will be reflected under the reaction and insights. So reactions and insights. Number four, accurate references. No, So your references. And of course, we also consider the grammatical structures of your reaction paper. And the last one, manuscript. No, the manuscript, when you say manuscript, this is your output, the product, your research, your reaction paper in general. Should be at least one to two pages. So I think minimum is young one to two pages. But if you want that more than two pages, it's okay. The, the space is 1.5 and the font style, the font style must be a font, font size, rather. Font size is 12. No? 12. Font size is 12. Uh, font style, it will depend upon on you. Kung sa yung font style. Okay, so this is the, the format. This, you, this should be the format and this should be uh, your, your, your output should look like this. Okay, of course, the title is the site of the first mass in the Philippines. So number one, Roman numeral number one, is the introduction. You make an introduction about the relevant lit issues or uh, basing on the literature that is for number one. Number two, your summary of text or your literature. Ano, mga literature ni mo, discuss ni mo dira, ah. Number three, of course, mo niya itong ipangita, ganiya, number three, na Align na siya. Reaction and insights. No? But it must be supported by readings, related literature. And number four is your conclusion. There in reaction and insights, you, you're going to, or in the summary of text, you're going to compare the two sides. No? It, is it in Limasawa or Masawa? So discuss na ni Modera. Then you give your reaction. And the last one is your decision or the conclusion. Kung asa ni mong claim, is it in Masawa or in Masawa? So that's the conclusion. Then, of course, do not forget to write your references. Where did you get your information, your research uh, sources? So that's reference. So again, I'll repeat. This is the format. There are five areas. The introduction, the summary of the text or literature. Your reaction, it should be supported by readings and literature. And in conclusion, you're going to decide where was the first mass in the Philippines. And the last one is the references. So you're, uh, what is good thing about the, the activity, you are given two weeks to answer. So meaning, mostly, uh, activities are given only one week or five to seven days. But in this case, I know that this is very uh, tasky, no? because you're going to read, no? different articles. This is what I told you during the, the orientation of our subject or our course, no? That this will be all about readings because the subject is readings in Philippine history. This time, your skills in reading comprehension analysis will be developed because of the reading articles, uh, the different articles that you're going to read. Because you cannot make this reaction paper if you did not read these articles or you can add more articles that will support your reaction paper it is a research-based activity now because we would like uh, because the institution or the school would like to integrate uh, research based activities in the subject so that when you will have your research subject you no know, in the future you now you you will no longer be Unaware, not aware na kaso ang sana. I know that you have your experience on that. Okay, I think, I hope that, I hope that I am understood. No, uh, If you have some questions no, related to the activity, you can make a message in our group chat or you can direct message me. Okay, so I think that's all for this time. Uh, thank you so much for listening. No? Uh, just find time to answer. You are given much time. No, you are given two weeks to answer the assessment. So thank you so much for listening. I hope that you will be able to answer the assessment. Thank you and God bless us all.